Hello YouTube, welcome to another vlog of knives and you are at the We All Juggle Knives channel. I've got a lot of interesting stuff to show you. This is going to be some overviews and some previews of uh, items that I may do full reviews of depending on the uh, response. But I got a knife from uh, Kubi, I got a knife by Kudaman of Spain, I've got a limited edition Spyderco, I've got some funky new uh, Moras, or at least uh, new color schemes for old classics, and I got a Swiss knife as well. Now all of these are on Amazon, so if you want to look at the stats on the knives, or if you want to look at what the current pricing is, just check the text description box and uh, you will find all the information. So here we have the Mora Companion with the black coated blade, Sandvik steel. All right, pretty snazzy, Got, comes with that black sheath too. Now here is my old Mora Companion in the more familiar color scheme, and this happens to be a carbon steel blade. Most Moras you can either get them in a Sandvik stainless or carbon steel. And this will run you about $25 currently. And if you don't want the black coating, you can get a companion for $15. Right? I'll include links, of course. So paying like $10 more for the black coating. Now one thing about the knife, the black coating, the way it comes, the black coating covers like part of the edge. So on the listing for this knife, they actually say it doesn't get like fully sharp or it doesn't show its sharpness fully until you use the knife enough to scrape off some of the coating that covers the edge. Right? Now that I've never I've never heard of a knife company saying that like it it'll get sharper only after you use it. But that was pretty fascinating. I actually did what they suggested. I basically used it until the edge was fully exposed. What I did was I took a piece of firewood, I drew it down the piece of wood, and I even did, I even did it with my other hand as well to get, you know, even on both sides. So that took care of this part of the edge, and then for this part I did some whittling. And again, I did some with my left hand and some with my right hand in order to uh, get both sides of the blade. Right, so you see, you see those marks there. Right, so did it work? Did it actually get sharper or will it now show its full sharpness? Let's test this out. Well, actually, yeah, they were right. If you do use it and you scrape a little bit of that coating off the edge, it actually does show uh, better, you know, it shows its full sharpness. So, uh, you know, the knife that gets sharper as you use it, at least for a while. All right, so there you go. Extreme value for Mora and, you know, the different color, that's just going to be your excuse to pick up yet another Mora knife. I also picked up this. Mora knife recently. This is a Mora Craftline 511. And mainly I really like this new color scheme they got going. The black and red. I think this is like the Darth Maul color scheme, right? But it, it's high vis. It is practical. Basically if you drop your knife on the trail uh, you can easily find it again. Or if you just set it down. Right? That large handle in relation to the blade, right, the handle is slightly oversized, but that gives you good control. In Sweden, this is like a carpenter's knife, I have heard. But that doesn't mean you can't use it at your camp or in your kitchen, you know, out of doors, indoors. You know, here it is in a human hand. So as you can see, uh, that, that handle does give you some good control. I could definitely see why, why carpenters would use this knife. And it comes with this sheath. You see it's got a belt clip right there. And it locks in. Locks in like so. Yeah, I mean, how can you go wrong? This is $8. How can you go wrong with this for $8? I mean, yeah, that's, a, that's an extreme value there. And they have a whole bunch of different colors. All right, so again, just check out the link. I'm sure you'll find something. 
a nice impulse buy for you. Here's a very interesting blade. This is a Kubi Kukri Machete. At least uh, that's what it was listed as. Comes with that sheath. And here is the knife itself, full tang fixed blade, D2 steel. The blade length from the uh, top of the handle scale is eight and one half inches. And when I saw this, I was just kind of fascinated by it. As you can tell, it's a compact chopper, you know. I, I usually wouldn't call something a machete if it's, uh, you know, eight and a half inches. But I, I can see, I can see why they're saying that. When I saw this knife, I thought, you know, for its size, this could probably chop the heck out of some branches. I will be doing a full review of this. I've already spoken to Kubi, and, uh, you know, I promised them I would do a review of this, and they were very keen on that. Now, those are G10 handle scales, and look, thick stock. I mean, this is definitely some solid construction. You know, what could go wrong? Uh, Kubi is more known for folding knives, actually, but when I saw they started making fixed blades, I became, I became a whole lot more interested because there's just a lot more stuff I can do with a fixed blade. I mean, look at this thing. This is just begging me to, to chop and to split wood, and who knows? Who knows what you could do with this? Look, look how top-heavy. I mean, look at that shape. And then this inner curve right here, like if you chop like a branch right here, um, you know, because this is because of this shape, there's nowhere for it to go. It kind of forces, forces the cut. That's why that's one reason why kukris and really a lot of uh, recurve blades. It's a very useful shape. And then look, because it because this um, of this shape right here, right, the belly of the knife. There's a huge curve right there. So that also has uses. Uh, you know, in, in slicing, like that curve, it'll just slice through, right? You can also put things right here and then pull. You can pull that curve through. So I really like just the versatility of this blade shape. I do own a Kubi knife from back in the day. I don't think they make this model anymore, but it's a frame lock flipper. And yeah, they're best known for budget priced folding knives. But I'm liking that they're made, I mean, they just come out and make this, you know, that's, that's crazy. But it's a, it's a good development. So yeah, this knife is all, was all right. It, it wasn't very expensive. Like I said, it, they don't make this specific model anymore, I don't think. But I will include links uh, to the Kubi knives on Amazon, and you can just uh, check them out for yourself. As for this sucker, it's a bit pricey right now. Um... I think it's around it's around a hundred, but I don't know. Hopefully that'll reduce. It, it was on sale for twenty dollars less uh, just recently, so I, I don't know what the final price will be. Uh, th this could take a lot of abuse. When would you carry this? I don't know. Maybe when you uh, you want a chopper, but you don't want to carry, uh, let, let's say, my S wing carpenter's hatchet. The the thing is is uh, a lot heavier than this. So this is like. If you wish you could carry like a big chopper, but for whatever reason you choose not to carry a big chopper, this small chopper will do in some situations. But yeah, stay tuned for that full review. It's been a while since I picked up a Spyderco, but I uh, checked out their current offerings and I could not resist this. What is this? Ah, I like that color. This is, they're calling it Ivory FRN. This is the straight spine stretch. So lock back, see the pocket clip, Spyderco opening hole. This is VG10. Oh, very, very smooth. It's a pretty attractive knife. So this is a stretch? Yeah, it's the straight spine stretch. This is a limited edition. Now, this is probably the only place you're going to see this on my channel because uh, since it is limited, you know, by the time I make a full review, they might not even have any anymore. Right, so I'll just give you this overview. And there it is uh, next to my ZDP 189 stretch. And I believe that, I believe they're on the stretch two. So I guess these are stretch twos technically. But you see why they call it the straight spine stretch because a normal stretch uh, has that curve to the spine and a unique blade shape, more, 
almost like a Skinner type blade shape. You know, one thing I do wish is that, um, I wish they had used a better steel for the limited edition. I mean, I prefer the ZDP on my old stretch to VG10, so it's like, I, I always feel like limited editions, they should have like a better steel than, than the, the, uh, the standard edition, right? Uh, but nonetheless, they did, they did convince me, right? Spyderco did tempt me to pick this one up. You know, if you're looking for high value, I, I would not get this, uh, this limited edition stretch, to be honest with you. I mean, I like it because the stretch is one of my favorite series, uh, and I also collect Spyderco's. And I also like the uh, ivory color, so it just hit my collector bug in like three, three areas. But without those collector aspects, uh, I wouldn't recommend that in particular. I would recommend other spider codes for, you know, just value and utility. I mean, the Delica, the Dragonfly, the, uh, the Man Bug, the Ladybug. I mean, spider co they really do offer a lot. You know, this ZDP stretch, this thing, uh, I mean... ZDP really uh, takes and holds an extremely sharp edge. I mean, this thing, uh, yeah, you could, do, you could do surgery with this. I did check on Amazon, and uh, I, couldn't find, I couldn't find this model available anymore, so I don't know if they make this particular model, but there's a whole bunch of stretches on there. I will include links to some of my favorite spider codes in the text description box, and you can check out what's currently available. So yes, if you didn't know, these are out and available, and it, maybe you collect stretches or love the stretch series, you might want to pick one up. You know, I, honestly, I, I have a feeling they're going to come out with another limited edition, like six months from now, that probably has a better steel. I've gotten burned by Spyderco a few times like that, where I jumped on one and then they had an even better one later in the year. But that is actually a good way to get burned, you know, it's a fun way to get burned, especially if you're a knife nut, so I hope you enjoyed seeing this blade. This next knife is from the uh, Spanish brand Kudamon. Not, not super well known in America, but definitely known to uh, Spanish viewers. We've only recently got these on US Amazon, and there's only one seller that carries them. Alright, here's the knife in the sheath. Pretty, pretty snazzy looking sheath. This is the Kudamon MT1. It's kind of a, uh, well, it's kind of like a hunting knife, or it could be a camp knife, field knife, maybe a little bit of bushcraft, or even a survival knife, dare I say, but uh, you gotta love that, that Bowie design. I mean, that's classic, right? And it's kind of a wide knife uh, for its length, so or wide blade for its length, so it's a little bit overbuilt. It's got very strong construction. You can see extended tang. It is also a full tang. Oh, that steel is MV58, by the way. Yeah, you can, you can see that that's strong construction. Uh, nice looking red liners on that, too. You know, with that Bowie shape, it reminds me of my uh, Ontario uh, Air Force pilot survival knife. Right, so kind of that same idea. Right, kind of like a survival knife. Uh, very strong, except because it comes to a very pointed tip. You got to be careful of the tip, you know. Yeah, they wanted to give you an extremely tough and strong knife, but then with the tip, I'm sure they felt that the benefits of a very pointed tip uh, would outweigh the uh, the potential fragility. Just uh, you know, don't don't pry with your knife unless you absolutely had to. I gotta say, the handle on this, just the shape and the smoothness, it's extremely comfortable, right? Like with a hunting knife, if you had to process a very large animal and let's say it's taking a very long time, this is the kind of knife that you could use for hours on end and it would be comfortable. I am pretty familiar with Kudamon and with Spanish knives in general. This knife right here is a, a CDS survival knife and I've already done a full review of this knife, uh, and this is, this is just another Spanish brand, and it uses it uses that same steel. Here is another Kudamon knife. I've owned this knife for about two years, and I've been happy with it. This is their MT5. I haven't reviewed it yet, but maybe in the future. As you can see, pretty much the same knife. It's got the, the same handle. It's got it's the same steel. 
just different blade shapes. So because I've owned this knife for a while and I've been happy with it, I definitely already knew what I was getting into with that knife as far as the materials, the quality level. Now you might also remember Kudamon from this knife, which I've also reviewed. This knife is kind of the same idea as a Buck 110, like an outdoorsy folder, maybe a hunting folder, camp knife, folding camp knife. It's got dual thumb studs jimping, but you can check out my full review of this. It's a liner lock, and it's a pretty attractive knife. Um, yeah, outdoorsy folder, but also kind of like gift quality. Like if you want to give this to, you know, the outdoorsman in your life, I'm sure dad would appreciate this knife. Now Kudamon has these same knives in many many different color schemes, right? Some of them the blades are not black coated, others they are. They have all different colors for handle scales, right? So if you don't happen to like the ivory, and I got I wanted all mine to match, but if you don't happen to like the ivory, I probably would have got the black handle scale model, if not this, because that also looked pretty badass as well. Now, those two fixed blades, those were both around $88, right? And the prices, in America, the prices are all jacked up and weird. I don't even know what a fair price is because there's only one seller. So we're probably ending up paying more in America, maybe. I've also seen the exact same knife listed for anywhere from $88 to almost $150 by the exact same seller, so be very careful. I don't know what's up with their listings. They just list one at a time instead of listing, you know, 20 in stock. They seem to list one at a time, which makes no sense. But I will include the Amazon link to their storefront. And again, make sure you're getting the lowest price. I don't know uh, who's doing their listings, but yeah. Um, they were selling the exact same knife for like 140. I was like, I'll, I think I'll take the, the 88. And you would think maybe it's like a different steel. Uh, make sure you check which steel it is because sometimes they do use different steels and that will have different prices. Well, all right, I hope you enjoyed seeing this blade and I may do a full review of this. I may not. It really depends like how many of these become available on Amazon because with only one seller, and they seem to list one at a time, so there don't there would only be like five of these available. I don't know, but if they straighten that out, I may, it may be worth doing a full review. So yeah, but until then, I still I love the badass blade shape. I gotta admit, here's an interesting knife to show you. This is a Suiza D06. You know, this is the other Swiss company. Yeah, Suiza is actually a Swiss company. And you gotta wonder if maybe some people from Victorinox or maybe people from the old Wenger, maybe they went over and, and uh, made this company. I don't know. But the big news here is that with the black coated implements on this uh, multifunction knife, it looks a lot less. It looks a lot less. Uh, how can I say this without without Google and YouTube just censoring me? It looks a lot less fruity. Okay, fruity. That's going to be our euphemism. I will probably do a full demonstration review. Not because I think this is necessarily better than Victorinox, but at some point, like, some companies have to try to just break the, the monopoly or the stranglehold. You know, Victorinox pretty much dominates the multifunction knife world. And I mean, at some point, I like to see companies at least making an effort right to to give them a run for their money so we're going to see the bad and the good in the in the uh in the review but until then i will include the links to all the new suiza models like i said they have some that look a little more badass a little less fruity a little less like some sort of freaking postmodern disaster like luggage accessory and more like something you might actually you know use if if you're male but anyway, let me show you the lock on a Suiza. You press on the crest right here, and that actually pushes a liner. That actually pushes the liner to unlock it. So that's pretty funky. Oh, and the, um, hold on. The, this, like, opening slot hole, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, I guess theoretically you can use it for one-handed opening. But, um, 
you know, it's a little awkward because it's placed so far down on the blade. So I actually just use that as if it were, you know, just um, a two-handed opening function. But yeah, that's a, that's a lowdown on this Suiza knife. So stay tuned for the full review. And if you want to check out their other models, they'll be in the text description box. They added scissors to some of theirs, and their scissors look really funky. So yeah, check those out. All right, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed seeing all this wonderful steel, all right? Make sure to check out the text description box. You want to use those links. They do help support the channel, and I really appreciate that. Stay tuned for all the, uh, the upcoming knife vlogs and, of course, full reviews.